By all accounts, we are looking, if we take what's still under the ground into account, we're looking at the largest megalithic site that's ever been created on Earth. Gobekli Tepe is a site that truly boggles the mind, taking us back over 11,000 years to a time when prehistoric peoples demonstrated remarkable capabilities that challenge our understanding of early human civilization. The sudden appearance, 7,000 years before Stonehenge, of a megalithic site that dwarfs Stonehenge, to me that's a mystery and it's really worth inquiring into. Imagine this. Massive stone pillars, each carved from limestone using nothing more than simple stone tools. It's a task that would require not just considerable skill, but a collective effort from a group of people who had yet to discover the wheel or metal tools. These pillars weren't just any stones, they were shaped into T-forms, a design that's unique to Gobekli Tepe, standing up to 5.5 meters tall and weighing up to 20 tons. One of the many ways that Gobekli Tepe, I think, is going to prove to be a game changer is it's going to require us to reconsider uh, our whole dating sequence on megalithic sites around the world. The effort to transport and erect these massive stones without modern technology is nothing short of astonishing. Using levers, ropes and wooden sledges, the people of Gobekli Tepe managed to move these enormous stones over considerable distances a testament to their ingenuity and teamwork. This wasn't a small feat, it required a high level of social organization and cooperation, suggesting that this community was far from the nomadic bands of hunter-gatherers we often imagine. But why did archaeologists tell us for so long hunter-gatherers couldn't do it and we needed agricultural well, populations that could generate well, surpluses that could pay for the yes, specialists that was to... The theory. Instead, they were capable of complex planning and communal effort, likely driven by shared beliefs and common goals. The technological innovation and architectural planning evident in Gobekli Tepe's construction are truly ahead of their time. The precision in the carving and erection of the pillars, along with the thoughtful layout of the site, show an advanced understanding of stone masonry and basic engineering principles. This sophistication challenges the simplistic view we often have of prehistoric societies, revealing a people capable of complex thought and remarkable feats of engineering. When you dive into the story of Gobekli Tepe, you're not just exploring ancient ruins, you're stepping into a world where prehistoric peoples pulled off engineering marvels that would be daunting even by today's standards. Picture this, a community back in the 10th millennium BCE without access to metal tools, the wheel or any form of animal labor, decides to build something extraordinary. They set their sights on massive limestone pillars, each one towering over five meters high and weighing around 10 tons, and they decide to quarry, shape, transport, and erect these giants using nothing but stone hammers, wooden tools, and sheer human will. It's a scenario that might make a modern engineer blink twice. These ancient builders leveraged ingenious methods, likely rolling these colossal stones over logs or dragging them on sleds made from tree trunks, all coordinated by what must have been an incredible communal effort. Just imagine the sight, hundreds of people coming together, each one playing a part in this monumental task. It wasn't just about physical strength, it required a high degree of planning, coordination and social organization, suggesting that these early communities were far more complex than we often give them credit for. And let's talk about the layout of Gubekli Tepe. It wasn't a haphazard arrangement of stones. Gobekli Tepe is a bit more nuanced, you know, we have stone, we have stone circles, we have some interesting astronomical alignments, the world's first perfectly north-south aligned building. These T-shaped pillars were carefully positioned to form circular enclosures, a testament to the builders' advanced planning and knowledge of stonemasonry. They understood the properties of limestone, knew how to quarry large blocks and shape them with precision. The placement of each pillar was intentional, reflecting a deep understanding of geometry and structural engineering. Gobekli Tepe is like a time capsule that's slowly revealing its secrets to us, and among its most captivating mysteries are the potential astronomical alignments hidden within its ancient stone circles. Imagine standing among these massive pillars over 10,000 years ago, looking up at the night sky. Some researchers think that the people who built Gobekli Tepe did more than just admire the stars. They aligned their monumental structures with them. 
The idea that these ancient builders could align their creations with constellations like Sirius or Orion, or mark the solstices and equinoxes, is mind-blowing. It suggests they were not just master builders, but also early astronomers, tracking the heavens with an accuracy that challenges our assumptions about prehistoric peoples. This possibility opens up all sorts of fascinating questions about how and why they did this. If the alignments at Gobekli Tepe were intentional, it could mean that these ancient builders had their own form of astronomical observation, maybe even a basic calendar system. Gobekli Tepe and the lack of evidence for permanent settlement presents a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual life of people over 11,000 years ago. This site, rather than serving as a home or village, appears to have been a significant ceremonial or pilgrimage destination. The absence of typical domestic remains such as extensive cooking hearths or trash pits that would indicate long-term habitation suggests that Gobekli Tepe was not a place where people lived year-round. Instead, it was likely visited by various groups for specific purposes, possibly related to religious or spiritual practices. This realization points to a level of social complexity and spiritual or religious depth that predates the advent of agriculture and settled life, challenging the conventional sequence of societal development. The stone pillars of Gobekli Tepe, carved with an impressive array of reliefs and symbols, are among the earliest known examples of narrative art, offering profound insights into the prehistoric mind. These carvings feature a diverse menagerie of animals, foxes, lions, bulls, snakes, wild boars and birds, each meticulously rendered, suggesting a deep reverence or symbolic significance attached to these creatures. The presence of such carvings indicates not only advanced artistic skills and aesthetic sensibilities, but also suggests these animals held particular meanings for the people who created them. They could represent clan totems, spiritual guides, or mythological stories central to the community's beliefs and rituals. Moreover, the humanoid figures, some of which appear to be depicted wearing animal skins, hint at early forms of shamanistic practices, or the veneration of deities or priests donned in ceremonial garb. These figures could represent intermediaries between the physical world and the spiritual realm, playing crucial roles in the rituals and ceremonies conducted at the site. The abstract symbols found alongside the more representational carvings add another layer of complexity to our understanding of Gobekli Tepe's spiritual significance. These symbols could be early attempts at encoding sacred knowledge, marking significant events, or conveying complex concepts related to cosmology, theology, or social order. The carvings on Gobekli Tepe's pillars, therefore, are not merely decorative, but are deeply imbued with meaning, serving as a tangible connection to the beliefs, rituals, and cosmologies of prehistoric peoples. They provide a window into a world where spirituality was expressed through the medium of stone, and where the natural and supernatural realms were closely intertwined. The story of Gobekli Tepe is like something out of a movie, an ancient site buried under tons of soil and debris around 8000 BCE, only to be rediscovered and shake up everything we thought we knew about the dawn of civilization. This wasn't just a case of a lost city getting swallowed up by the sands of time, it was an intentional act, a massive project that likely took as much effort and organization as the construction of the site itself. Why would a society go through such lengths to bury this place? The theories are as fascinating as they are varied, ranging from ritualistic closure to a strategic move for preservation against natural disasters or even invasions. But here's the kicker. Gobekli Tepe turns the Neolithic Revolution's narrative on its head. The common story is that agriculture kick-started the rise of complex societies and monumental architecture. The, the idea that we, that we come across that another turn of the spade reveals information that causes us to reconsider not just was it hunter-gatherers or agriculturalists, but perhaps something bigger than this is involved. Yet here we have an elaborate complex built by hunter-gatherers long before farming took hold. It suggests that the impulse to gather for religious or ceremonial reasons might have been a driving force behind settling down and forming communities. This discovery forces us to rethink not just the timeline of human history, but the very factors that drive societal development. Gobekli Tepe shows us that hunter-gatherer societies were capable of a level of organization, cooperation, and spiritual expression that we usually only attribute to settled farming communities. It hints at a world where shared beliefs and rituals were the glue that held societies together, potentially paving the way for the transition to a sedentary lifestyle.
But what's fascinating about them is they are, they are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America. That they create structures on a massive scale. That you can see connections between them and the later, the later Maya. For the Maya, the Milky Way was a particularly important feature of the heavens. They conceived of it as the road that led to their netherworld, Zibalba. In the verdant lands of Central America, the ancient Maya civilization flourished with a mysterious brilliance that continues to captivate the world. Among the many enigmas they left behind, their profound understanding of astronomy stands as a testament to their intellectual prowess. Graham Hancock, a modern explorer of ancient mysteries, delves deep into this aspect of the Maya, proposing intriguing theories that stretch the bounds of conventional history. That whole mystery of the Mayan calendar was clearly inherited from the Olmecs. It wasn't something the Maya made up. The Olmecs used that same symbolism. So the Mayan calendar is actually an Olmec calendar. The Maya long count calendar, a marvel of ancient engineering, intricately tracked a 5,125 year cycle with astonishing precision. This calendar wasn't just a tool for marking time. It was a complex understanding of celestial cycles intertwining the Maya's daily lives with the cosmos. Hancock suggests that this precision hints at a deeper, possibly inherited, knowledge of astronomy. Was this sophisticated understanding a legacy from a much older, now lost civilization? When one looks at the grandeur of Maya structures such as the pyramid at Chichen Itza, the brilliance of their astronomical alignment is striking. During the equinoxes, the play of light and shadow on this pyramid creates the illusion of a serpent slithering down its steps. To Hancock, these architectural marvels are not just buildings, but celestial maps, echoing an advanced understanding of the cosmos. Orion was extensively involved in Mayan rebirth beliefs, which described the constellation and specifically its three belt stars as the turtle of rebirth. In Egypt, as amongst the Maya, the stellar context involves Orion and the Milky Way. The Maya's awareness of the ecliptic, the path followed by the sun, moon, and planets across the sky, further fuels Hancock's theories. Their ability to predict solar and lunar eclipses and track the movements of Venus, which they revered as the god Kukulkan, showcases their deep astronomical knowledge. Did they learn this from an older civilization? Hancock wonders. A civilization lost in the depths of time. Hancock theorizes that the Maya might have been part of a vast network of ancient civilizations, sharing knowledge across seas and continents. This global maritime culture, as he envisages, could have been a conduit for transferring advanced astronomical and architectural knowledge to the Maya. The architectural designs of the Maya, seen in their pyramids, temples, and cities, reflect a level of technological and engineering skill that seems almost ahead of their time. Were these skills handed down from a previous, more advanced civilization? The mathematical systems of the Maya, including their use of zero, a concept rare in the ancient world, were integral to their astronomical calculations. Hancock proposes that this mathematical sophistication too might be a legacy from a forgotten civilization. We're not what it's all about at all. Uh, that there may have been an earlier civilization that reached a high level of advancement, perhaps different from ours, but nevertheless an advanced civilization, which was just taken out of the story completely by a global cataclysm. In a tale woven from the threads of ancient mysteries, Graham Hancock, a modern day seeker of lost truths, presents a fascinating theory. He imagines a world where an advanced civilization predating the ancient cultures known to history, once thrived. This civilization, possibly flourishing before the last ice age ended around 10,000 BCE, was a beacon of knowledge in fields like astronomy, architecture, and mathematics. Hancock's story tells of a society whose influence stretched far beyond its own time and space, touching various corners of the ancient world, including the enigmatic Maya civilization. I think, and it's my case, that it wiped our memory of a previous episode of, of human civilization, that right at the epicenter of this cataclysm was a civilization that we would regard as advanced, not a simple hunter-gatherer civilization, which was utterly wiped out uh, in this cataclysmic event. However, this ancient global society in Hancock's story faced a dramatic and catastrophic end. He hypothesizes that a cataclysmic event such as a comet impact or a massive flood 
nearly obliterated this civilization. But not all was lost. The survivors, carrying the torch of their advanced knowledge, ventured out into the world. These bearers of ancient wisdom found their way to other, less advanced societies and shared their knowledge, planting the seeds for new civilizations to grow. Among these were the Maya, who, in Hancock's view, may have been one of the many inheritors of this ancient legacy. Hancock points to the Maya's remarkable architectural and astronomical achievements as evidence of this influence. The precision of their calendar systems, their understanding of celestial cycles, and the alignment of their buildings with astronomical events are, in his narrative, not just the fruits of their own ingenuity but possibly a heritage from a civilization lost in the mists of time. He draws parallels between the architectural styles, religious beliefs, and astronomical knowledge found across various ancient cultures, suggesting these similarities might be remnants of a shared source of ancient wisdom. Because we now know that at that time, between 12,800 and 11,600 years ago, truly global cataclysmic events involving rapid rises in sea level yeah. uh, did occur, and suddenly the, the worldwide tradition of a, of a global flood stops being just a myth and starts being a memory. In a narrative that intertwines the mysteries of ancient seas with the Maya calendar, Graham Hancock, a storyteller of history's hidden chapters, brings to life his theories of a bygone era. He paints a picture of an ancient world, not fragmented by vast oceans, but connected through them. This world, according to Hancock, was home to a sophisticated global maritime culture. This culture, adept in the art of navigation and shipbuilding, embarked on extensive sea voyages, knitting together the far-flung civilizations of the ancient world. Hancock's tale is not just about the movement of ships, but also about the flow of ideas, technologies, and beliefs. He sees the similarities in architectural styles and construction techniques across different ancient cultures as whispers of a shared knowledge, possibly disseminated through this maritime network. In this story, ancient seafarers are the unsung heroes, ferrying not just goods, but also the seeds of culture and religion across the world's watery expanse. He draws parallels with the Polynesian navigators, known for their remarkable oceanic voyages, suggesting that similar capabilities could have existed among these ancient maritime cultures. They're telling us that uh, this lost civilization was submerged in a great flood around 11,600 years before our time. This is why I think we need to pay attention to the Atlantis story rather than just write it off as the ravings of the lunatic fringe. But Hancock's narrative takes an intriguing turn as he touches upon the mysterious Maya civilization and their long count calendar. This calendar, a sophisticated timekeeping system, tracks a cycle of approximately 5,125 years, culminating in a date that modern calendars align with December 21st, 2012. Hancock, weaving a tale from the threads of time, views this not as an apocalyptic end, but as a significant moment in Maya cosmology, a marker of major transition or transformation. In this story, the 2012 phenomenon is not a tale of doom, but a moment of cosmological significance, possibly indicating a shift in human consciousness or the dawn of a new era in human history. Hancock uses this moment to discuss the broader concept of historical cycles, how ancient civilizations understood and measured time, and their alignment with astronomical events such as the precession of the equinoxes and the galaxy's alignment. Graham Hancock, a modern-day chronicler of lost civilizations, presents a captivating theory. He tells a story of Earth's history punctuated by cataclysmic events, asteroid impacts, massive floods, and volcanic eruptions that have periodically reshaped the course of human civilization. In this tale, these cataclysms are not just natural disasters, but pivotal moments that lead to the rise and fall of civilizations, causing a reset of human progress.